Hey there, welcome back. And it is officially 2019. Happy New Year. So to get this off my chest, the unlucky 20 films I hated in the year 2018, which was a rather shitty year for movies. Now, I can't say it's the worst year for movies. For me, that's 2014. The reason being, Michael Bay produced Ninja Turtles and then had a shitty sequel in 2016. Both those movies can suck my testicles. And in 2014, hey, let's get the four Ninja Turtles, have them look like if Shrek fucked their mom. And then when they were kids, they had juiced up with steroids until they were fucking teenagers. Oh, yeah, and their mom got game banged by a bunch of fucking Goombas. And then they had DSL lips. And they're really fucking stupid. Th those are abominations. And that started in 2014. That alone makes it the worst year for me on movies. But on top of that, you have the Robocop remake with training montages. With music, the, a fucking yodeling. You have Expendables 3, which killed that franchise. You have Sabotage, which helped sabotage Arnold Schwarzenegger's film career. You had Goddamn Zilla, might as be called Cock Tease the Movie. And then you had Dumb and Dumber 2, a sequel to a fun comedy, and Jim Carrey can't even make it work? Holy shit. I don't care if he's in the new Sonic the Hedgehog movie as the villain. That movie's going to be shit. It's fucking teaser posters are shit. Having Sonic's legs look like fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger from his pumping iron days. Veins ready to pop out. Shows how fucking stupid they are still, these studios. I, was, I mentioned that 2014 Ninja Turtles. Let's make a movie called Ninja Turtles... But let's not have any ninja shit in it. Let's not have them do martial arts. Because they're as big as the fucking Hulk. Let's have a Robocop remake. Which one of its most famous themes is the violence. But let's have a PG-13. And a train montage with yodeling music. In the background. Let's make the Expendables 3. Which the whole thing was an homage to the 80's action films. But let's have a new bunch of people no one gives a shit about and made a PG-13. Let's have Godzilla. But he's, he's, in, he's in it less than the fucking original one from the 1950s. So that to me is still the worst year for movies. But 2018 is pretty fucking close. There were some good movies, like I said, my favorites list. Searching, Mandy, Deadpool 2, Mission Impossible, Fallout, Revenge... Which is a French film, among others. I'm gonna start with number one and go to 20. Mix it up. That way, my passion will be at number one. Because if I go backwards, I'll get tired by it, get to it. Number one is The Predator. If you like the film, to each their own, I don't understand one single bit why anyone would like The Predator. If you're a fan at all of Predator 1 and 2, you should hate the new Predator film. If you don't, again, teach their own, I don't get it. But the new Predator is an insult to anything involving Predator. Uh, Predator 2 is the most underrated sequel of all time. I love those two films tremendously. The Predator... You have an awful cast. You have a very boring lead in Boyd Holbrook. You have an abomination of a script by Fred Decker and Shane Black. You have a script that, I swear to God, this script must have been for a fucking skit for Mad TV. Which makes sense since T.D. Michael T. was on Mad TV for a bit. This script would work better as a Mad TV or Saturday Night Live sketch. Not as a fucking Predator movie. Let's have god awful lines of dialogue. Like, fuck me with an aardvark. Or, your mom should be rated E for everyone. Make me want to fucking puke day glow. Let's have one of the dumbest strips to come out in the longest time. 
I'm like, wow, did Fred Decker lose his mind? Did Shane Black have his head up his ass? And he read the initial he read whatever was inside his track. And then that's what he wrote down. Because it fucking smells like shit. Let's have an a boy who can read prayer language and he's the next evolution of humanity. Which people think Mercury Rising or Bruce Wells is stupid. But you look at this bullshit. Let's have a super duper predator with crappy CGI kill the predator in 10 seconds flat. Let's have the predator, the title character, think about it. what does that, if you love the film, answer me this, the predator that's in all the trailers, all that, what, what does that thing do to any of the main cast? It didn't even kill any of the main cast. It didn't even maim or hurt any of the main cast. Some faceless people that you don't know anything about because they're random soldiers, random people. And it's called The Predator. The movie's called The Predator, and The Predator doesn't kill anyone in the main cast. Think about that. Think about it. Think about that. Only the super duper predator with again god awful CGI. And even then, what does he do? He kills the sniper guy. Thomas Jane jumps on it when it's on fire, but Thomas Jane doesn't burn. So I guess if you jump on something that's on fire, you're still immune. Because you'd have Tourette's, I guess. I don't know. And then they get can't Thomas Jane Keegan, Keegan Michael Key get hurt and they shoot each other because they're dying. Ridiculous. And then two characters get killed by a, a fucking force field. Not even by the pr uh, super duper prayer, by a fucking force field. The slowest moving force field in cinema history. What do people love about this film? I, I would love to know. The action? What action? Oh, a predator kills some random people in a laboratory. Uh, you know what? I saw that done better in Predator 2 when you have the Jamaicans when they cut the guy's heart out and the predator goes to town with his cool weapons. Or when he killed Gary Busey's men in the warehouse with all the meat hanging and the predator kills all those people. Uh, watch that. You get nothing out of this. The super duper predator, and it's too dark to barely see shit. And the main villain, he accidentally kills himself. He accidentally kills himself. Probably because they shot an ending, and like, well, I don't want to take place in the daytime. It's not scary. It's still not fucking scary, you fucking idiot. Yes, I'm calling Shane Black an idiot. And Fred Decker. To write this stuff, you have to be fucking dumb to write this shitty of a script. Now, I'm not saying you're dumb if you like it. I'm saying the people who wrote it and made it are fucking dumb. So much shit that doesn't make sense. Let's have a final shot that might as well be out of more Power Rangers movie than a Predator movie. Let's have a kid murder someone, have zero effect. He literally murdered someone. He has no emotion on his face. So is this kid going to be a psychopath? Is that what he's going to be? Because that's what his, what his behavior entails. Murder someone. Oh, well, accidentally. Okay, I accidentally did something... Even if the person got their hand hurt, I would still feel bad. Even if it was an accident. This kid accidentally murders someone, no emotion. And then 10 minutes later has this funny, in a sitcom way, Dad! Telling that to Boyd Holbrook because he doesn't want his dad to kill people. And I'm like, uh, you just murdered someone 10 minutes ago? 
Is the movie too stupid enough that it doesn't remember that? Let's have a predator that murders people at the beginning and is hunt. Why? Is Wait a minute. But at the end of the film, you're saying that hunter came to help us, to give us a warning. So why at the beginning of the film is it hunting people and stinning them? It's hunting and stinning people at the beginning, for some reason. But at the end, oh, it, it came here to help us and give us this weapon. Brain hurts. Just every everything about this movie is stupid. The the kid fucks up the super duper's predator ship and it makes my brain it literally makes my brain hurt thinking about that movie. The music sucked, the action scene sucked. Oh it's rated R. So what? So fucking what? Do you want a cootie for that? Oh boy, Holbrook, I have this alien device came from a fucking spaceship. Let me swallow it. I hope it didn't have any space germs. Let me swallow this alien device. If I found a piece on the fucking carpet of gum, has been chewed up or anything. Literally, it was out of the wrapper. It fell on the ground. I wouldn't put that in my mouth. I'd be like, nope. This is an alien device. You don't know what it's made of. You know, <laughs> hopefully it's not radioactive or anything. No, I'm going to swallow it. Why? So, I guess he shit it out later. To, I guess. Also, here's another thing. If he knows he could turn himself invisible, why does he just turn himself invisible and go to fuck home? Why does he let himself get caught after swallowing the thing? It's nothing is... I mean, why do the characters... Why are they never afraid? Oh, they're never afraid of the predator because the predator doesn't fucking do anything to them. And then here's a 10-foot fucking super-duper predator. The predator shoots and misses point-blank range. Just everything about this fucking movie is dumb. And you know how dumb this movie is? I read this the other day. One of the alternate endings that they filmed, the Predator weapon, was fucking Ellen Ripley. Not Sigourney Weaver. It was someone in a suit, and on their name tag was Ripley. And they said it was supposed to be like Ellen Ripley. As a, a predator hunter. And they had some other actress. You didn't see her face, but... Don't believe me, look it up. It was like on Bloody Disgusting or some other website. I'm like, what the fuck? Look it up. If you don't believe me, look it up. That's how dumb. I'm like, so, wait a minute. Doesn't Ripley's dead? Because Alien 3. Also, isn't Ripley like a, at least 100 years in the future compared to here? So what? She is alive and went back in time and is hunting predators? It must be Jason Voorhees. You know what? It would make more sense if it was Jason fucking Voorhees from Jason X. For fuck's sake. He went from Earth 2 or whatever to here to hunt predators. In fact, I'd rather see that fucking movie. Jason, you know, Uber Jason hunting fucking predators. That would have been a fucking better movie than this. I'd rather see that fucking movie. I I got to stop because it's already 15 minutes and I'm talking about one film. The Predator is a piece of shit in every single fucking way. Every single fucking fashion. Stripped, characters, comedy. It's a comedy. There's no horror in it. Predator and Predator 2 are horror action movies. This is a comedy. And it's not a funny one. Thomas Jane's worst performance 
Keith Michael Key was irritating. The bad guy doesn't even get a just desserts. He accidentally blows his head off because they fucking probably couldn't get the actor back, so they had to refilm the ending, so they probably CGI some shit. That's why it's so goddamn quick. You couldn't tell what the fuck happened. I know people who didn't know that happened. And then you tell them, they're like, no, that didn't happen. Oh, really? Look it up. What? And this is, this is like your main human villain. I mean, <clears throat> filmmaking-wise, even as a popcorn movie, it's one of the worst popcorn movies I've seen in a long fucking time. AVP is Aliens compared to The Predator. And yes, I said that. I'd rather watch Alien vs. Predator ten times over this one. It's easily better. <clears throat> and it's still not as fucking stupid as this movie. <clears throat> Number two, Estate Plan 2 Hades. I don't know what Sylvester... I am a Sylvester Stallone fan. I even have a fucking Rambo cap. That's what I wear in all my fucking videos. My username has Rambo in it. I am a fan. I don't look forward to Rambo 5 because of Stallone's output in the last 10 years. And yes, I do find it disappointing because I know the guy can do better. How do I know that? Over the top, lock up, Ram the four Rambo films, most of the Rocky films, Nighthawks, Copland, yes, Daylight, ICU, Dick Carter, Tango and Cash, all films I enjoy that I reviewed because I did the Sylvester Stallone marathon where I reviewed all of his movies. <clears throat> I know the guy can do better. Demolition Man, Cliffhanger, even The Specialist and Assassins are classics compared to this shit. Like a Steve Plan 2 Hades, easily one of Stallone's worst movies. You have a director who cannot direct. He cannot direct sci-fi. He cannot direct action films. You have a piss-poor low budget. The whole point of a Steve Plan 1 was Schwarzenegger and Stallone being together, and you don't have Schwarzenegger, so why make a sequel to this film? Why? There's many other... If you need to make a sequel to a Stallone film, why the film where the whole point was him and Schwarzenegger together? but you can't get Arnold back. I didn't even like the first escape plan because it was a boring prison film that should have been an action film or should have been a more in tone with Fortress with Christopher Lambert. Christoph Lambert. Escape Plan 2 Hades, you had this Asian guy who cannot act his way out of a fucking mime class. You have a terrible... Batista's wasted a nothing role. You want to see him in a better role? Watch Final Score, which was part of my favorites of 2018. Here he's used piss poorly. A uh, stone, if you combine his total, you're lucky if he's in it for 20 25 minutes, and that's pushing it. The plot is predictable, the production value is. I've seen better production value in directed video films back in the 90s. Watch a PM Entertainment movie, then watch bullshit like this. You didn't even one action scene worth a fuck, one fight scene worth a fuck, because you're not going to find it. Shaky cam, up close, can't understand what's going on. And I don't understand why Stallone is picking roles like this. Or that fucking movie with Matthew Modine, I forgot what it was called, but yet he says no to being in a Jackie Chan film. Ex Bad Dad. I think it's under a different title. That was gonna be Stallone and Jackie Chan. That was gonna be Jackie Chan and John Cena to Stallone left. To do shit like this? I, w I would love an explanation. I would love to know why. It it's so lazy, so inconsequential, so forgettable. I mean, it makes, I don't like Bullet to the Head, but it makes Bullet to the Head look like Cobra in comparison. That's how bad Steve Plane 2 is. 
So fuck that movie. And it's just like Stallone, you could, you, you could do so much better. But, I'm sorry, piss poor choices in your film roles has led you to be, to become Steven Seagal and the fact that you're stuck to direct a video. Remember that Steven Seagal, now you're with, you know, other people. Like, you were the guy, very briefly you were in direct a video with films like Avenging Angelo, but Oh, you're you're making these good films. Hang in there. Now you're down in the dumpster with this shit. Number three, Day of the Dead Bloodline. Why do we need another remake of Day of the Dead since the last one was such a craft fest with vegetarian zombies? Yes, that was a thing in the Steve Miner, the guy who gave us Friday the thirteenth part two and three. And he fucking did Day of the Dead with Vegetarian Zombies. No, let's do another Day of the Dead bullet line. <clears throat> Which I don't remember anyone in the fucking directing or cast. With the worst performance I've seen all year. And the lead actress. She can't ask for shit. And a useless, pointless storyline, an unlikable lead character, which the movie wants to tell us that she's doing the right thing, but as the viewer, she it looks like she just keeps doing the dumbest fucking shit and getting people killed, but yet the movie's too stupid enough to realize that. And there's does the bare minimum to relate itself to the original Great Day of the Dead with by George Romero in order to have the name. Oh, well, there's a bunker and there's military people and they do want to look for a cure. I guess the one zombie smarter than the average zombie, like Bub. But, I mean, piss poor filmmaking, piss poor script. An extremely unlikable lead, horrible acting performance by her. David did Bloodline, just a useless, pointless fucking zombie movie. That's an insult to the Day of the Dead. Fuck, if someone said which is better, the fucking vegetarian zombie Day of the Dead movie is even better than this. And that movie's a piece of shit. So that's how bad Bloodline is. <clears throat> Number four, China Salesman. This is Steven Seagal's latest, latest fucking clusterfuck, but he didn't star in it. He's in it for a tiny bit. And enough to have his body doubles come in into his fight scenes and be the fat fuck that he is. And yes, I can call him that because I w had to suffer through all his shitty directed video movies. Because I reviewed them on this channel. I reviewed every Steven Seagal film, including his 852 fucking directed video movies. I had to suffer. I had to suffer through that shit. Yes, I didn't call him a fat fuck. And in this movie, Mike Tyson is also in it with a dumb fucking accent that he cannot pull off. He's not a thespian. If you don't have Mike Tyson, just have Mike Tyson be Mike Tyson and talk like Mike Tyson. And like the movie starts off as if it's going to be a movie about Mike Tyson wanting to go after Steven Seagal. No. I, I, maybe it did that for marketing purposes, but that's not even the movie. Five minutes of the movie. It's more... This random guy who can't act, Asian guy, people but oh, you have a problem with Asians. Oh, yeah, that's why my number one favorite film of the year is Searching with John Cho. Oh, because he can act, and the people in that movie can act, unlike this guy in China Salesman. <clears throat> and the movie is about wanting to set up phone communications and I think it was Africa and espionage 
No, we want to set up our phone company. No, we want to set up our phone company. Does someone really look at this idea and say this is a movie that should become a thing? Is this idea, this story, really worth the weight? The 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 digital the digital film is printed on. <clears throat> is this really? a script worthy of put money into and the movie it was one of the most chore filled sits I had to suffer through and it was a slog to sit through it felt like it was four hours long it wasn't but it felt like it but when is this movie going to fucking end there's this espionage and then it becomes a little bit of a war movie where the China salesman is out on the battlefield and trying to survive from this military, one killing the other. Mike Tyson's the villain. Like it almost seemed like Mike Tyson would be the hero at the beginning, but no, he's a villain, and then he wants to blow this place up, and then it's like they kind of try to make a redemption of him, but it doesn't work, guys. The snow movie gives me a fucking headache. Steven Seagal, just retire. Don't even do cameos. Just retire, please, and go live in fucking Russia, where you're at. Do your fucking dancing or whatever the hell you do. <coughs> you made my fucking throat God, irritate. Number five, Deep Blue Sea 2. I enjoy Deep Blue Sea. Yeah, the CGI doesn't hold up, but it's still a very entertaining movie. That's a good film with Thomas Jane in it. Rennie Harlan. Knows what he's doing as a director in that film. It's a fun, over the top B movie idea, but there's some really good practical effects of the sharks. The score is pretty decent. The cast worked well. El Kuje was actually fun in the movie. It was surprising, it had some good twists and turns. There's some, I remember the first time I saw it was in the theater, and like, oh shit. Didn't expect that person to get killed, or you know, didn't expect Sam Jackson's death scene how that comes about. Again, the CG doesn't hold up, but the rest of the movie I think does. De Deep Blue Sea Two. Did you really need a sequel to it? No. Although I'm surprised it took them this long to sequelize it. It's just a remake of the first movie. That's really what it is. All they did was remake the first film. And instead of Alzheimer's, it's I think some other I forget what it is the that they're trying to find a cure for. You don't give a fuck about anybody in the cast. And you're just watching this going, this is a useless fucking movie that is only made to cash in on a title. Just be hey, some people like Deep Blue Sea, so let's go see this. So I was the sucker. And hell, you you can make a decent shark film nowadays. The Shallows. From the guy who I think he directed nonstop. That's a good film, The Shallows. Even film even direct a video like low budget. There was this film, I think it was made for cable with Lou Don Fellows called Red Water. That's a better movie than this. And Red Water is not a great movie, but it's still better than this. And at least he had Lou Diamond Phillips, LDP for life. Deep Blue Sea 2 is just useless fucking film. Number six, Tip Boxer Retaliation. Van Damme, I don't know what. You need to fire your agent or. <clears throat> 
wake up with some Folgers in your cup. I don't know. Just come on, man. This lead is a sequel to a film that was a piece of shit. Kip, back, Kip Boxer Vengeance, or whatever the hell it was called. Has a stupid dreams nightmare scene where the lead character's on a fucking train as if he was James Bond. I think this is the one where it had an ending where it's it's it, he the guy's literally fucking dead and he comes back to life or something. I swear it's something like that. And I think Van Dam was the character's voice got fucked up and so he's mute or something. I, I a lot of times a bad movie you block out of your fucking mind. This is one of them. Lead guy, he wasn't good in the previous Kid Boxer film, he's not good in this. It's just a waste of fucking time for anyone involved. Number seven, Halloween 2018. I'm sure people thought it'd be higher, but it's still on my shit list. The only reason it's not higher is because I didn't mind Jamie Lee Curtis, I don't think she was bad. The script was bad. One or two scenes were decent, like the tracking shot with him going into one house and then another house and killing people. Decent scene. <clears throat> That's pretty much it. The movie, I think when I first thought about it, I'm like, eh, it's... It's not the worst film, but it's so fucking overhyped at this point. I fucking hate it now. I, I hate the film. It's so fucking overhyped. It's not the second coming. And it's not that good of a movie. And people are talking about it was so scary. What's so scary about two cops trying to be Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction, trying to be the Royale with cheese, talking about their fucking food? What's so scary about these two dumbass journalists holding a fucking mask on a fucking asylum with a literal chessboard on the ground? That's what it looks like. Oh, because it's the pieces being moved and you gotta wait your time. Oh, you have to be that obvious with your metaphors? Why don't you have a fucking neon sign that says, Metaphor, you dumb fuck. Pointing down to the fucking ground. And then the guy, turn around, Michael, Michael. It's like the most abrupt cut to an opening titles sequel that I've seen in a while. And what is so satisfying to see, oh yeah, that character you liked in the first Halloween film... Well, she got fucking steered for 40 years to the point that she's psychologically damaged and to the point that she's hiding and barricading herself for 40 years. Oh yeah, that's a great way to treat the character. She's fucking isolated herself for 40 years, so most of her life is fucking gone. Hmm, how many H2O? How do they treat the character? Well... It shows she's got some strength. She still has PTSD because she has nightmares and she doesn't want her son to go out. She's paranoid, but she's still leading a life. She met someone, had a son, obviously, and she's still dealing with life. She's a teacher at a school. Isn't that a better way to handle the character than, oh, well... Sorry, 40 years gone because you're scared and you look like the crazy cat lady from The Simpsons. Oh, it's more realistic. Uh, the other thing's realistic too. Isn't that what you hope? That when someone go has a horrible encounter that they can persevere and move on with their life? But I guess I'm alone in that thinking. So, yes, I think it's a bit shitty to have the character 
Well, for 40 years she steered shitless, and every no one likes her because they kiss her a fuck up. <clears throat> I, I love when all these franchises just love to destroy characters, and or love to piss on characters. I love it. I love it. I don't know. I don't know why anyone loves it. I don't get it. Maybe because I'm passionate about that I actually like the characters. That's why I hate Alien 3 so much. Because I actually like the characters from Aliens. <clears throat> and it's just... Her... The, the woman who played Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter, she was annoying. The girl who played the granddaughter, she was just forgettable. Uh, the one doctor who was then a villain, what was the fucking point of that twist? Yeah, it's a twist because it's fucking stupid. The one guy talking about, what was like pissing in his... What the hell did he say? I got pee in my pants or I got pee... Not pee in my pants. What the fuck did the guy... He said a stupid fucking line... Something about a cereal or something. I, I can't remember. It, it was so idiotic. I blanked it out of my mind. Peanut butter on my penis. I cannot believe I remember that. I got peanut butter on my penis. <clears throat> this is the dialogue we have. Oh, John Carpenter approved it. Yeah, he, he approved of the check he got. <laughs> well, he did the music. People praise the music. I don't give a damn about the music. It did nothing for me. I will go. I'd rather go listen to his actual albums that he's been making. Not this. The ending is a lame duck fuck of an ending. He gets burned again. Like, isn't this. Like, you cop. The movie that you see at Halloween 2. How does that end? Michael gets burned. How does this end? Michael gets burned. I guess, because we don't actually see him burn, because they're going to make sequels. And I told you they're going to make sequels, and some people doubted me, and lo and behold, they're making sequels. Because it's never over. Nothing is over. They don't just turn it off. They don't. It's never over. That's what I'm tired of. I want these franchises to end. Just, you know what the thing about a story it has a beginning you know what else it has a fucking end and a lot of times the ending is the most important part but so many of these things don't have a fucking end and how many I mean other than maybe James Bond but how many franchises are still on a high point even though they made 10 15 fucking movies I'm not talking about two. I'm talking about like when you get to seven, eight movies. Some people could say maybe Fast and Furious. Some would disagree with that. Mission Possible, Fallout was great. But it's a rare beast. And you don't need to see more fucking Michael Myers. I said, what more can they do with Michael Myers? Not much, because all they did was regurgitate all the fucking previous films and put them into a best of list. Greatest hits list. And that's what this movie was. It was a greatest hits version of a Halloween film. People like that, because it wasn't Rob Zombie's Halloween. Which, I'll give you that, it wasn't as bad as that movie, but... That's, lo that's pretty low fucking standards, and that's the only thing. If you like it for other reasons, we disagree. But if that's the only reason, sorry, I want but I, I want higher standards. And I'm sorry, this movie is not going to fucking hold up in years to come for people. I, I could see it. I uh, this movie. Fuck the new Halloween film. Number eight, Creed two. Probably no one people thought would be high on the list, but I'm just so fucking. 
I'm so over the Creed stuff, meaning I got all my anger out when the first Creed came out. Creed 2 came out, it was more the same fucking shit. Instead of Creed 1, which ripped off Rocky, Rocky Balboa, and a little bit of Rocky 5, Creed 2 rips off Rocky 3 and Rocky 4. And yeah, I get the Rocky films for follow a formula. But this one. It wasn't formula, it was fucking Grand Theft. Stallone felt like he was barely in it. There's a good chunk of the film where he disappears. That's why I didn't mention much of Stallone in that review. Because there's not much to talk about. Fucking Adonis Creed. Fucking dickhead. I had one guy go, oh, he's not a dick. You have, you're wrong. You have to admit that. Really? He's not. The motherfucker wins the belt in this film. And then, oh, here's Ivan Drago's son. I need to go fight him. And Rocky tries to warn him, wait a minute, wait a minute. And then Donis goes, well, fine, I don't need you, huh? Well, I guess you won't be there to throw in a towel, too, like you didn't for my dad. And going on about, what about when I was helping you with cancer? What, you you acted as if Rocky owes you? Treats Rocky like shit. Stone walks off with his head fucking down. Dolph Lundgren as Ivan Drago. I don't give a fuck. I'm sorry. It worked great in Rocky Four. But you know what? Ivan Drago is not one of my favorite Dolph Lundgren films. I mean, performances. It's great for what it is. But you know what? When I think of Dolph Lundgren, I think of I Come in Peace. This movie. I think of Showdown Low Tokyo. I think of The Punisher. I think of Men of War. Universal Soldier. I think those performances and characters are better than Ivan Drago. And I like Ivan Drago a lot. But, he, it's not, well, Dolph Lundgren, it's only Ivan Drago. Really? Then you're missing out on a lot of good Dolph Lundgren stuff. Red Scorpion. Command Performance, where he's a drummer, and he kicks bad guy's ass at a rock concert. Fucking killing people with guitars and stabbing them with drumsticks. Dying is easy. Rock and roll is hard. Watch Command Performance. And this movie just... All they did was Rocky 3 and 4. Let's copy that. Oh, you have you heard the guy... Have you heard the story about the guy who... After he's won a champion, he goes head first against the wishes of his manager and gets his ass hit? Oh, I saw that in Rocky 3. Oh, how about uh, Russia versus USA? Oh, Rocky 4. And instead of going to the fucking snow, they go to the fucking desert to train. And Michael B. Jordan, I, I, he does nothing for me as Creed. He's an annoying fucking twat of a character that I want someone to knock his fucking block off this character. If Ivan Drago himself should have said, I'm going to fight you, knock a Dinah's Creed on his ass, fucking come out, he takes the fucking belt or whatever just because, leaves, and the movie would have been better. Creed 2, just again, maybe I should have more fire in my being. It's just, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. Overpraised, overhyped. I know some people when they I have I looked at the comments for the best of 2018 a couple of people put Creed 2 on their list I don't get why I don't get it Michael B. Jordan character is an asshole unlikable douchebag let's just copy and paste Rocky 3 and 4 Stallone has nothing to do feels like he's barely in the fucking film Dolph Lundgren he's there to stare 
This is what Ivan Drago is. He steers. He's this harsh asshole to his son. But at the end, no, he's got a heart. Bullshit. I don't buy that. Fucking. You trying to. No, I don't buy that. Yeah, fuck Creed 2. Crap 2. <clears throat> Number 9, Blackwater. Another. Speak of Dolph Lundgren. And John Hall Van Damme. Blackwater. Lame fucking action movie. With barely any action. You get Dolph Lundgren and Van Damme together again. Who worked together with Universal Soldier, among other films. But now they're all on the same side. They're not going head to head. Cool. W what do these two. What can they do? Well, let's have Dolph Lundgren locked in a fucking room for most of it. And doesn't really show up to do anything until like an hour in. Pretty much. Uh, a very boring, routine action flick in a submarine. A couple of lame, lousy shootouts that I've seen done better on TV shows. Like CSI Miami. Van Damme once again looks like he's ready to fall the fuck asleep. <sighs> Lifeless direction. You barely get any time with Dolph Lundgren and Van Damme together, let alone for them to give any rapport with each other. Blackwater is, you know, it shows maybe Van Damme can't do this anymore, and that sucks because I'm a Van Damme fan. Yes, I did like John Claude Van Johnson. I liked that show. I wish they had a second season. I'd rather watch that than shit like this. I know some people disagree. We agree to disagree. Blackwater is another crappy directed video film. And we have too many of them as is. <clears throat> and my number 10 is Skyscraper. With The Rock, who is becoming more the crotch day by day. You want to see Skyscraper done well? Go watch Final Store with Batista, which came out this year. Or you could just go back and watch the original Die Hard. Watch any of the Die Hards. However, I'd rather watch Die Hard 5, a good day to shit hard, than fucking Skyscraper. More like Cum Dumpster. Because that's where this fucking movie belongs. Skyscraper is an epitome of lifeless, routine, Hollywood, homogenized crap that the action genre is in nowadays. If it's a big budget movie. Or at really any budget, honestly. Get the real ones. This is why. I get impressed with a film like in Mission Impossible Fallout. You see how insane those action scenes are in Mission Impossible Fallout. And it's Tom Cruise doing a lot of this shit. Isn't it funny that Tom Cruise is doing more of his stunts and danger, dangerous stuff, than The Rock? Think about it. You watch the crap in Skyscraper where everything's on a green screen, everything is. CGI enhanced. And then you look at Tom Cruise and all the shit he did. Does that mean Tom Cruise is more badass than The Rock? Maybe. I mean, the plot... It's diehard, but it's a bigger building. Doesn't take place on Christmas. Dev Campbell's in it. Nice to see her in a movie again, but this could have been anybody. Boring, predictable, in one year out the other, you know, generic CGI. Most of it you saw action you saw in the trailers.
They basically miss films like Cliffhanger, they basically miss films like Under Siege, Speed, even a film like Hard Rain, which I think is a bit of an underrated film with Christian Slater. Go watch Hard Rain. And the real physical stuff they did with jet skis, and they made a whole town look like it was flooded. For real. And that budget wasn't the, was a lower budget than this. And they made the entire town look like it was flooded. Hard rain. Christian Slater, Morgan Freeman. I think it's a pretty damn good flick. It's sad when I'd rather watch fucking Firestorm with Howie Long than a movie with The Rock. And I don't like Firestorm, but I'd rather watch that than this fucking movie. PG-13, homogenized crap. So, that's number 10. Number 11, Tremor 6, A Cold Day in Hell. This series needs to put into fucking hell and locked up in a cage and not come out again. I love Tremors. I think Tremors 2 Aftershocks is a criminally underrated sequel. I think it's one of the best directed video sequels. Tremors 3, meh. Tremors 4, bad. Tremors 5, bad. That TV show they were going to do with Kevin Bacon, or I don't know, because they already did a TV show with Michael Gross. There is no more ideas you can have. Tremors didn't need a franchise. It needed one sequel, Tremors 2, which was good. That's all you need, man. And then Tremors 6... Jamie Kennedy, I like Jamie Kennedy, but he does not fit in these movies. Either that, or the script he's given, or the ad-libbing he does, are painfully unfunny. The whole point of this film was a cold day in hell. It's going to take place in the snow. No. Fucking one scene in the beginning where it looks like it's artificially put in after the fat. Whether it be CGI or what, might as be fucking Photoshop. I'm like, you're, you're so cheap, you can't get real fucking snow? Really? Or real fucking shit that looks like snow? You have to literally put it in an artificial digital way? And even then, that's only the first five minutes of the movie. The rest of it, Michael Gross, Jimmy Kennedy go somewhere, and oh, well, there's a heat wave or some, something like that so there's no snow on the ground so what was the fucking point of even doing this movie in the first place and calling it a cold day in hell what was the point that's like calling a movie twister but you're in fucking palm beach or you're in fucking florida and oh well they're watching a, they saw a tornado on tv this is what's happened in Iowa. And then they turn it off. It's like the movie's more about fucking hurricanes. The, what the fuck you call it Twister for? And then the subplot of Michael Gross dying because of something he got from Tremors 3. I, I, I think. Great, take Michael Gross out of, out of action for chunks of the time, which would be the only thing people watching Trevor Six would want to see is Michael Gross. So it shows how delusional these people are, and they're making. And why is it that most of these tre new Tremors films have to feature the Ass Blasters? That was created in Tremors Three. It's them having some combustion to let them fly. To me, that was the shittiest one of the iterations of the Graboid. And they don't have Shriekers anymore, apparently. Because there are none in this movie. I barely remember any in Tremors 5. I think there were some, but I barely remember them. None in this movie. <clears throat> but they love their ass blasters. Yes, we can blast my ass. 
sure fucking dying to do so. <clears throat> Number 12, Black Panther. I'm sure people are like, wow, that's not higher on the list. Because the other movies just piss me off more because I'm a fan of Stallone, or I'm a fan of Van Damme, I'm a fan of Dolph, I'm a fan of the Predator franchise, at least the first two, or just bullshit like Day of the Dead Boulevard or China Salesman. But Black Panther, one of the most over overrated films of the year. One of the most overrated films of the year. And maybe because I'm getting superhero fatigue, although I did like Deadpool too. Maybe because I'm tired of this Marvel Disney bullshit. The type of a guy that has liked a lot of them, but lately, no. And Black Panther. Why does Black Panther tip more ass in Captain America Civil War than he does in his own fucking movie? Did someone answer me that? Why do people say Michael B. Jordan is one of the best villains of the Marvel Universe? Why? Can someone explain why? Why? You can see his point of view. Oh, the point of view where he literally says in a sentence, I want you to get rid of people, including children, when we do our invasion. He says that in the third act, including children. Yeah, that's a guy to root for. Mm -hmm. The action, the stuff Black Panther does, you saw in the trailer. The fucking car thing, uh, the scene at the beginning where it's so fucking dark, you might as well be watching the goddamn movie in night vision. And the CGI video game fight scene at the end. That fuck the Fucking CG and Ben Affleck's Daredevil look better than that shit. For crying out loud. This is 2018. Well, it was. Technically, that's last year. About, since about an hour ago. It was boring. It was lame. It was a slog to sit through. And I'm thinking... What's all this praise coming from? I don't give a fuck if they're black. I give a fuck if it's a good movie, and to me it wasn't. And then, of course, I still remember being called fucking racist because I didn't like that film. Even though I fucking love Blade. I love Blade 2. I think those are much better than this bullshit. Considered I'm one of the biggest supporters for Predator 2, you know, with Danny Glover. Can I use that? Since that's the thing. If for people who don't like Predator 2, can I just say, oh, you don't like his racist, right? Can I start using that? Says Black Panther. And people are like, oh, Wakanda. It's like, do you, you do realize that but Wakanda doesn't exist, right? Wakanda is a fake place. It's like when Avatar came out and there were stories that were like, Oh, I'm going to kill myself because Pandora, whatever the fuck it's called, is not real. Really? Wakanda's not real. That right there is my review of Black Panther. Fucking boring. Number 13, Tomb Raider. <clears throat> Since then, I actually watched my friend Michael Keen Phantasm play the reboot video game of Tomb Raider. And it was definitely better than... That game is definitely better than this movie. And, like, I guess it just tried to follow that game a little bit. Where there's a ship and... It's in the rain, storming. She gets blown out into the water, stuck on this island, trying to find her friend or friends. It's pretty much the similarities. This film... I'm trying to remember this fucking film.
I don't understand the hate that the Angelina Jolie, the first one, gets. Lara Croft Tomb Raider. Oh, well, that's that. What? Angelina Jolie, her character actually looks like she enjoys what she does. You know, she has a smile on her face. But here, it's just the same sort of performance. It didn't impress me much of anything. Obviously, it didn't impress much of anybody since no one saw the fucking film. I think the villain was it Walton Guardians? I can't fucking remember. Maybe not. Maybe it was someone. No. I can't remember who the fucking villain was. Uh, maybe it wasn't him. The villain did nothing for me. Forgettable in when you're out the other film. Tomb Raider. It doesn't make an impact. You forget it ten seconds later after you watch the film. 14 Solo, a Star Wars story. Once again, Disney fucking up. You did not need a Han Solo prequel. And this guy did not deliver. I'm not saying you have to be a perfect... You gotta sound perfect like him. This guy, I don't know why the fuck they got this guy. I have no idea. Or why you make it so... Oh, the Millennium Falcon... The computer is really this one fucking feminist robot or whatever the hell she is. When she dies, they put her chip in the Millennium Falcon. I'm like, I didn't even, like, the Millennium Falcon, I just figured it was like an airplane. You push some buttons and it goes. Did you, did anyone ever get the idea that the Millennium Falcon was a sentient being? They had the mind of a fucking android robot. So, what is that fucking ship in Farscape? It is alive. But even then, when when they put it in, it doesn't really do anything. So I'm like, what was the fucking point of this? Woody Harrelson, he's there for a paycheck. I just, you know, this is one of those films I didn't give a fuck about. Not many people did. One of Ron Howard's worst films. This could have been directed by anybody. Number 15, Venom. I didn't be like, wow, I thought I'd be higher on the list. T probably should be higher on the list, but Venom... I like the Venom character, but it's used so poorly. So badly. Venom changes his mind from, I'm wanting to invade to... Yes, I am with you guys, Eddie, because I like you, Eddie. Why did you change your mind? Why are you a good guy now? Why? Just because the script says so. Just five minutes later, you're now a good guy. Oh, well, he's being possessed by the symbiote, so Tom Hardy, he's going to jump into a lobster tank and eat it. Cause we're silly. Again, a film that like thinks it's a fucking comedy. And you know that's what they're going for. They even had a trailer where it made it look like a fucking romantic comedy. All oh, but it's for laughs. You know what? People don't take this shit fucking seriously. Maybe that's why we're in such a. Sh Maybe that's why 2008 was such a shitty year for movies. If you're not going to take it seriously, then do a Deadpool 2 type of film. 
Or like people don't know the difference between levity and comedy. This was a fucking. Why well, was be a fucking comedy? Oh, the symbiote is jumping from to a fucking dog. The villain trying so hard to be tough and failing is like, why is this guy the villain? He's not intimidating. He's not imposing. He doesn't have the Alan Rickman thing going from Die Hard. The fuck is this guy? Eddie Brock, he's a dumb fucking reporter, gets himself fired because he's a fucking idiot. Then gets his lady fired because he's a bigger idiot. You know what? Fuck it. I'm putting that as number 10. Now that I think about it. Number 10 is going to be Venom. Because the more I keep thinking about it, the more it pisses me off. Because Venom could have been done right. But no, you neutered it for PG-13. You have a clusterfuck of editing, so it's like, wait a minute. You, again, why does Venom change his mind when all this happened is... A brought his girlfriend saying, get in the car. Making them write the back seat or whatever. Then Eddie trying to get the symbiote off of him, which you would think would piss Venom off more, not not like Eddie more. It tells you someone the fucking ending of the movie is in the fucking trailer. The movie ends with the line turd in the wind, not the final line, but that scene. And then they walk out and onto the street, the, the sidewalk, but the, the one of the you watch the trailer, you see that scene, I'm like, that's the way it will end the movie. And you make your PD-13 and just give why did this film make so much goddamn money? I have no idea why. Number 16, Avengers Infinity War. People are going to be pissed, but this movie, once again, was overhyped, overrated. Once again, comedy. I get it. There's levity. There's in Marvel movies. I get it. But for this type of story, you're trying to do an Empire Strikes Back type of story. No, you don't need stupid humor there. Uh, Captain America was not really used at all. All because they're going to save him the next one where he dies. That's still me talking about this movie going, well, fuck was Captain America even in the movie for? Hulk becomes a pussy, a bitch. Oh, I got beat by Thanos, so I'm hiding in Bruce Banner. What? What? <sighs> Fucking Thanos having a stupid plan. There's too many people and not enough resources. So I will wipe out half the universe. Okay, wait a minute. If this glove can do everything, why don't you make another fucking planet? Why don't you make ten more fucking planets with resources? Hell, why do you need to make a planet? Just have the fucking resources be there. You... There's so many other ways to give people more resources than kill a half a billion fucking people. And if you get enough of that power, like the power of God, I'm sure you just create fucking resources for every fucking planet you go to. Dumbass. Heat this fuck. And the ending... What's the... It's just, let's kill all these people off. Most, most of them. But they'll be back. Because they have sequels coming out. It's just this assembly line that I'm getting tired of. Maybe it's one of those scenes. You like pizza, right? But if you try to have pizza every day, you get tired of it. 
I think that's the thing with Marvel. You just you get tired of it. You want to take a fucking five-year break. Or three-year break. Or fucking come on, man. And the, the thing with Thanos, if I understand the comics, the reason he was doing it is to impress Death. Because Death was a lady type of you know female character. So Thanos wanted to impress her because he liked her. Oh, I'm going to kill half a billion. Now, you know, or half... Not half of it. Half the universe. That will maybe help me get into death's panties. But of course, they're not going to do that. <sighs> Dinos, I'm sorry. If I want to watch Josh Brolin, I just watch Deadpool 2. <sighs> and I'm going to wrap it up because I'm literally falling asleep right here. <laughs> Uh, numbers uh, Infinity War. I just don't hear. I have no desire to ever rewatch that film again. I have no reason to. It's the best. Why is it the best? Thanos so great. Why is Thanos great? We've never had a villain who's trying to play it a gray area. Really? We've never had that in a Marvel movie. We've never had that in. A superhero movie? Yes, we have. Almost every fucking Spider-Man movie does that. Come on now. So it's a, I don't give a fuck about Thanos or a stupid fucking plan. The ending makes it not rewatchable. Because you watch the ending, you go, "Well, okay, the guy get their asses kicked." Because the base sound was a legitimate threat. And then in the next one, they can come back. That's what I mean. Like, is this. We have to plan shit five years in advance. But it, the ending is the ending. Even the rest of the movie, I didn't give a fuck about the action scenes. The guards they doubt see. What purpose did they have in the movie? I get that, you know, the one is Donald's daughter, but what do they really accomplish? What did Donald's Galaxy actually accomplish other than Chris Pratt being an idiot and letting. not helping out when they could have helped stop Thanos? And inadvertently causing the death of so many people because of his stupidity. I get that his emotions running wild, but come on. <clears throat> just the drawings of Dallas just seemed pointless in the film. Like why were they even there? And like some stuff is like, wait, Chris Pratt Chris Pratt's character can get the drop on Spider Man? Well it's a kid still. You know that thing called Spidey Sense? Why didn't they have him fucking up people like he did with in Civil War? He fucked up Bucky and oh, I can't believe I forgot his name. Forgot his fucking name. I can't believe it. There's a lot of shit in that movie. You're like, really? The Hulk is now a baby. Uh, makes Thor Ragnarok's ending pointless. Just Thor Ragnarok. Oh, we're going to go to another world. And we're going to settle. And Then at the beginning of this movie, most of those people are fucking dead. So what was the point of Thor Ragnarok? Oh, I got these lightning powers. Are you going to use them? <clears throat> nah, I need another hammer. I thought you didn't need a hammer. That's the whole point of Thor Ragnarok. The fucking assembly line. <clears throat> Number 17, Sicario de Soldado. I did not see the first one. Maybe that's why. I like Benicio del Toro, but the movie was had an interesting beginning, but I thought it, fall, it fell very much short. 
not much stuff seemed to happen. The action scenes, they don't stick out because one of them is told from the point of view of a girl who's hiding in a car, then under a car. Uh, the ending, what Bidisil gets, you think, killed, but not quite, but this ending where what he what's he going to do? What's he going to do with this guy? Is he going to teach? Oh, he's going to teach him what? Oh, he's threatening him. It's just a fucking boring movie. It's a boring film. Bidisio doesn't kick as much ass as the trailer leads you to believe. And I like Benicio Del Toro, but fuck, man. I forget what the fuck I was at. I think I was at 17, 18. I would go with Pacific Rim Uprising. I saw it. I didn't review it because there's nothing much to talk about. Pacific Rim Uprising really does seem like a ripoff of Robot Chocks to a point. And Charlie Day, his character gets possessed. And then even by the end of the film, I'm like, is he still possessed? It doesn't seem like he's better now. Or are you just leaving that for a third movie, which you're probably not going to make? And, you know, the movie was... Most of the movie was more about them, you know, those Jaegers fighting other Jaegers. That's what I mean. It felt more like it was trying to be robot jocks. But Robo Jocks it, I thought was better. Again, I didn't review it because there was not much to say. John Boyega, he was better than the guy in the first fucking movie, but Pacific Rim Uprising it was just boring. That that's a common term we're going to keep using. Boring. Number 19, Equalizer 2. I gave it another shot. I didn't give... The first Equalizer was a big fan of. This one I gave another shot to. Because, okay, the director and writer... I mean, the director, Antoine Fuqua, the actor, Denzel, they're coming back. Denzel doesn't really do sequels. Maybe they've learned what they did wrong. No, they just repeated the same shit. Bad pacing. It feels too fucking long. It feels like... It should have ended, you know, 30 fucking minutes ago. Everything you see, you see in the trailer. And then some cool shit in the trailers down in the movie. Like, you ever see Star Trek? Breaks the guy's fingers? That's not in the movie, that line. Not in it at all. And it's just bad pacing. It just slogs through... I'm like, there's so many edits, there's so many little things that you cut out, there's so many little subplots that you cut out that would make the film flow better. <clears throat> Number 20, Hellraiser Judgment. I mean, there's a couple interesting ideas I saw in the film, but it's like, what Hellraiser are they at now? I seriously can't remember how many Hellraiser films there are. Nine. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At least, at least ten, eleven, at least. You don't need more fucking Hellraiser movies. And then Penance, Diamond Played by Dead Bradley. <sighs> Production values seem a bit lower than even the other directed video Hellraiser films. It just goes to show you they ran out of, like, you know, 
you don't need any more of these movies. It's done. The characters suck. The human characters. This movie really... And honorable mention The Maid. I mean, the more they're about The Maid, the more disappointing it is. Because it should have been a harder edge, R-rated film. Should have gone balls to wall, balls deep, and it doesn't. It pussies out on the action front. The ending should have been this chaos where the shirt's killing everybody. No, the shirt was just a mild inconvenience. And then Jason Statham fights it. I like Statham in the film. I like how one character gets his comeuppance. The effects aren't that bad, but they should have went for the throat and it didn't. And that was the mis big mistake. Being so, yeah. But yeah, that's my top 20. I'm very tired because there's a lot to talk, talk through. Next year, I hope it's better. This year, at least we had Searching, Mandy, Deadpool 2, Bishop Falls Fallout, and more that I liked. With man, with the Predator, and the Halloween, and Stallone, and Van Damme, The Rock, getting fucking tired. <sighs> Horrible fucking year, man, for movies. Let's hope 2019 is better. I'm very tired. See you guys later. Have a good one and a happy new year.